I had two that I was kind of torn between two two of the top teams that made some pretty significant moves to to make themselves better for the playoffs. And I decided to go with Colorado as my winners. Uh, just the more I looked at it, I really liked what they did. It was directly fulfilling their needs, not just kind of like, uh, you know, adding some extra stock to the cupboards to move on, but um, to kind of sum up what they did, their ads are Yakov Trenin, Sward, uh, Duhame, Middlestat, Sean Walker, a 2026 fifth and a 2024 fourth. So adding a few picks to kind of recoup what they paid. And their losses are Byram, Ryan Johansson, a 2025 fit, uh, first, 2026 third, and 2025 third. Just quickly to talk about some of the like lesser moves here. Yakov Trenin and uh, Duhame are excellent excellent depth pieces for the fourth line both of them play with an engine both of them are physical uh trenin chips in and goals um more specifically over duhame but i remember him a few years ago in nashville's last playoff appearances in 2022 and 2021 he stood out to me because he's just a wrecking ball out there and it was kind of uh it was him and Tanner Janot really that stood out. Trenton had three goals in four games after they got absolutely swept, but he was one of the only pieces really working for them. Duhane's going to be another kind of grinder for them that I think just works out and it's what you need in the playoffs. But on to the, the bigger deals here. I'm going to package these two deals together because I think as a whole, these were were it's one big trade. They mm-hmm. happened a half an hour apart because one piece moving allowed for the other. Well, the two trades are Bowen Byram for Casey Middlestat and Sean Walker in a fifth, and they traded Ryan Johansson in a first. This works perfectly for me. I think that at first when I, I saw that Byram was moving for Middlestat, I thought, well, now they've got a hole on defense. I didn't love their bottom pair because of this. You have Gerard moving up to play with uh, Josh Manson on the second pairing and and you know, I, I wasn't totally in love with it, but then to see that they were able to get a defense to fill that gap and a pretty good one too, who's been real good for Philadelphia as late. He's not a you know, all world breaker and he's not going to get a ton of points for you, but he moves the puck well, he moves his feet well, and he plays defense well. And middle stat, the price to get a middle six forward in the last five plus years has been astronomical. And this guy's at a 0.75 points per game. That's unbelievable. Just a qu- quick three guys that I, I looked up their trades because they just came to the front of my mind. Andrew Kopp last year to the Rangers, 0.625 points per game. A first, a second, a fifth, and Barron. The Ooh. second was a first if the Rangers won the second round. Barkley Goudreau, 0.38 points per game, a first round pick. John Gabriel Pajot. A first, a second, and a third. And he was 0.66 points per game. So maybe the best direct comparison here. So kind of just goes to show that you're expected to be giving up a first, a second, etc. for a kind of second line center. And that's exactly what they got in middle stat. So I really love these moves for them. Their biggest weakness was their center um, position. And and this just shows like they remember what bringing Kadri in for them in 2022 did and they're doing it again yeah for sure a lot there case and obviously we talked quite a bit about this when it originally happened we kind of agreed that we think casey middlestad is kind of underrated around the league and you know bowen byram hasn't had extended looks in the top four but he's going to get that in buffalo and they're both great players and it's a pretty good trade that fills both teams immediate and depending on if they get to re-sign Middlestat, potentially long-term needs as well. So I thought that trade was perfect for Colorado. Obviously, bringing in Walker fills that hole right away and is just, it's an incredible get. And underratedly, they also get out of Johansson's contract at the same time. So like th- some savvy general management uh, moves here, like just like just a tier and you know if you want to call them the winners of the deadline sure they're definitely one of them uh i really considered taking colorado as as my winner but uh yeah man like they they've just done everything that you need to do 
at the deadline in terms of making a big splash, making your team deeper, filling the needs that you actually have rather than just tinkering around the edges like so many teams do every year. So I was very happy with Colorado's deadline. If I'm a fan of that team, like you should be ecstatic if you are. So yeah, Case, I think that's a great pick. Yeah, it is a great pick. Absolutely. And they got beefier. Like there's no question about it. The ads of Trennan and Duhame. I'm surprised that Nashville parted ways with Trennan because of where they currently are. And they've got a good shot to to make the playoffs. And they've been, you know, arguably the hottest team here in the NHL uh, for the last little bit. Um, but uh, apparently there were some issues with uh, contract and term and, and all of that uh, as they were trying to negotiate. And Duhame is just your your prototypical bottom six forward. And certainly that's a great trade with with Buffalo and, and Colorado. And Middlestad is, is going to be a great player there. He is certainly turned into a, uh, a great player and can remember not too long ago when uh, he was being called a bust um, after being a, an eighth overall pick in uh in 2017 and he's turned into a fine player and he fits that second line center role for them so yeah that's a great pick yeah and i gotta say harper um reading your three trade deadline targets for the sabers on the hockeywriters.com uh you pointed out that like a perfect target for them would be philip broberg kind of a, a young um 20 2019 draft pick defenseman who can fit into their top four and has a, a lot of upside and can be given a bigger opportunity. Well, it wasn't Philip Broberg, but you know, kind of a good comparison in, in Byram. Obviously, Byram the much better player now, and and also has the upside. But I, I just figured like I have to get a shout out that that was a, a pretty spot on target. You know, that the type of player, if you know, not necessarily the name in the end, but. Yeah. Well, and and also pretty tidy work from Buffalo side too in this trade because if you just look at the makeup of their young players, they have so many good young forwards who can kind of do what Middlestat does for them. And Middlestat needs a contract, and Buffalo has to make decisions on who they want to commit to long term up front. Yeah. And I don't know if Middlestat was necessarily in that uh, conversation if they wanted to pay him. So you get a good defenseman on the back end to play in your top four right away, but to also complement your other really good young defensemen who are already there. So I like the deal from both sides. And it's kind of funny that, you know, we all love this deal from Buffalo side, even though we're saying that Colorado is, you know, like one of the winners of the deadline. It's just like, it's a good hockey trade. Like how many times have we heard, heard that recently? I feel like these trades don't happen that often anymore. So it's cool to see. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like Elliot Friedman wrote in his 32 Thoughts blog before the deadline that, you know, a deal like that would likely come in the summer from Kevin Adams. And then a couple of days before the deadline, the the bomb drops and we get the Byram for Middlestad deal. So it, it works for both teams. And for our for Buffalo and I won't ramble on too much about them because uh, we want to get on here with uh, the rest of our episode. But like you've got a replacement right there internally in Peyton Krebs for for a guy like Middlestad. And so and when everyone's healthy, the thing is, Middlestad, if you're gonna put him at center and everyone's healthy, you've got two guys in front of him in Thompson and Cousins, who you've got locked up long term. So the Sabres, it would have it wouldn't have made any sense for them to pay seven million dollars plus a year on a long-term deal for essentially who would be your third line center if everyone's healthy yeah well he would have to move to the wing but i see i see the point they've got a thousand guys who do do. a similar thing so no great great hockey trade like i (laughs) i couldn't believe it (laughs) and byram has fit right in with buffalo so far yeah Yeah. over 25 minutes a night a goal (laughs) and an assist in his first two games like yeah 
playing 25 minutes case and actually doing something out there on like owen power yeah (laughs) on like power yeah that's that's been you've been griping about that for two years now and uh, and and appreciate the broberg shout out too i didn't even think of that case to be honest with you like i just put it out there and then but i didn't even think same draft and and everything like you know exactly and and just like the same makeup of a player just one they got the better one yeah yeah, exactly. 